a mass, M1, of 6 kilograms is connected to by a light string that passes over a pulley of mass 7.5 kilograms to a mass M2, which is 5.5 kilograms on a frictionless inclined surface that makes an angle of 22 degrees with the horizontal. See the figure below. The coefficient of kinetic friction between mass M1 and the surface is 0.24. There is no slippage between the string and the pulley. What is the magnitude of tension that's acting on mass 2? The moment of inertia of the pulley is this. All right, so is M2 frictionless? Yep, frictionless incline. So there's friction up here. So this is going to be pulled. So we're going to have force gravity going down that way. I'm going to write this as force gravity x, basically the force that's pulling it down the incline. We're then going to have a tension pulling it up. I'm going to call that tension. Ooh, I'm going to call that tension two. My numbers are getting crazy here. I just it feels like the one that's falling should be tension one. I know it's silly. Doesn't matter. There we go. And then there's going to be a force friction going back. Where force friction is coefficient of friction is going to be kinetic times uh, force normal. And in this case, force normal for the block over here is it's going to be mass 1 times gravity. Because there's only two force vertical forces. One will be gravity, the other will be force normal. And since there's only two of them, they have to be equal since it's not moving or accelerating in the vertical direction. All right, so now this is mostly what we need for our free body diagram. So I'm also going to draw force normal here and then I'll right, do this also as force gravity in the y direction. We're not going to need them for this, but it's good to know they exist all the same. All right, so I'm just going to start drawing or writing out equations for these free body diagrams. So for the first one, I'm pulling it down the sum of all forces on block 2, which is the one on the incline, is going to be mg sine theta. And that's going to be force of gravity on the block sliding down a hill, uh, down an incline. Um, there's some geometry involved. I've just memorized that when you decompose this gravity vector into x and y, the force that causes the block to slide down an incline is mg sine theta, sine for sliding. Um, you can figure it out using geometry, but I usually don't because I'm going to make some sort of mistake because the simpler the problem, the simpler the geometry, the more likely I am to miss it. So I just have it memorized as a mnemonic. So sum of all forces, mg sine theta minus tension 2, because tension 2 is pulling it back up the ramp. And that's going to equal mass times acceleration, and specifically the mass for mass 2 is mass 2. That's going to be our first equation. I'm then going to write the equation for um, block 1, just because I like to do the two linear ones first. That way I kind of keep everything straight. Uh, we're going to have tension 1, pulling it forward, minus the force of friction, which is going to be coefficient of kinetic friction, times mass 1 times gravity, and that's going to equal mass times acceleration. In this case, we're going to have mass 1 times acceleration. Then we're going to look at all the sum of all torques. We're going to say the sum of all torques on the pulley. So torque is R cross F, which is also moment of inertia times alpha. That's I for moment of inertia. And the relationship between uh, linear and angular x equals r alpha, v equals r omega, and a equals r alpha. We know this is true because we're told that it's, it uh, rotates without slipping. Did they say without slipping? I assume so. No slippage. <laughs> that was, they always have a different way of saying the same thing. So, no slippage. So, the sum of all torques, uh, we're going to have a torque due to tension 2 and a torque due to tension 1. They're both going to be perpendicular, so this cross product is just R times F, where F is going to be either tension 1 or tension 2. I'm going to assume that this direction is positive, so I'm going to write tension 2 first. So we're going to have tension 2 
or R times tension 2, because that's how we turn the tension into a torque. So this is tension, that's a tau, which is a torque. I know they look similar. Um, they are different. One is linear, the other is angular. And then opposing that's going to be R tension 1. And that's going to be uh, moment of inertia, which is 1 half. I'm going to say mass pulley, just because I like it, even though they la label it as um, pull, uh, mass 3, either way. And this is going to be moment of inertia. Now we're going to multiply that by alpha. This will be a little curly bracket. Alpha equals A divided by R, and that's just from our definition of no slippage. So this is going to be A over R. Going to cancel some things out. Cancel, 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 cancel. And I can rewrite this equation now as, nope, don't want to use red. That would be too redundant. Need to be a little more creative. There we go. Gray. Always a fine choice. About as neutral as you can get in life. T2 minus T1 equals 1 half mass pulley times acceleration. There we go. So now we're going to add up the left sides, add up the right sides, and see where we add, end up. This is always the hardest part. Ah, slightly darker blue. Okay. So we're going to have, we are going to have M1. No, M2. Ah, I knew that was going to get me. M2 G sine of theta minus tension 2 plus tension 1 minus coefficient of kinetic friction times M1G plus T2 minus T1. And this is just all the left sides of the equations all added together. Uh, that might be kind of a new concept that you can do this to use a way of solving a system of linear equations or a system of equations. Um, if it is, well, welcome to math, I suppose. All right, this sounds gloomy. I'm usually much more upbeat than that. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the right side. I'm going to factor out an A for acceleration, and I get mass 2 plus mass 1 plus 1 half mass of the pulley. There we go. Yes. Looking at these, the tensions cancel, and we get acceleration equals... Um, let's see here. M, no, I'm going to factor out a G as well. G, M2, sine of theta, minus coefficient of kinetic friction, times mass 1, and hopefully we'll get a positive number for acceleration. If we don't, I'm going to have to go back and figure out what went wrong, because that would mean it's not accelerating down the ramp, which if the coefficient of friction is big enough, it might actually be true. All right, so now we're going to take this equation. Uh, I think I'll copy it and paste it up near where the problem is. So now we can put this into a calculator. Calculator. So we're going to do gravity, which I'm going to call 9.81, but you can call it 9.8. It's fine. Times mass 2 which is 5.5 .5 times the sine of the angle, which is theta, which is 22 degrees, minus coefficient of friction. They tell us what that is? 0.24, yep, 0.24 times mass one, which is six. And that's all gonna be divided by mass two, which is 5.5 .5 plus mass one, which is six, plus mass of the pulley, which is 7.5, and we're going to divide the mass of the pulley by 2. And that gives us an answer of 0 0.399 equals 0 0.399 meters per second squared, which is useful, or which seems reasonable, because it's less than uh, gravity, and it's positive which is also plus. But they want to know it's the magnitude of tension acting on mass 2. 
So tension 2. So we go back to our equations. I'm going to take the top equation because that's the one that had um, tension 2 in it. Um, I could use the pulley, but then that becomes difficult because that's tension 1 and tension 2. Nope, I'm going to use this equation. So now that we're looking at it with a fresh set of eyes, fresh set of eyes implying that we now know acceleration, I'm going to say that tension 2 equals, let's see, move that over there. So we have mass 2 g sine of theta minus acceleration. Yeah, okay, I'm good with that. So that is going to be, um, I'm going to move this back up here again so I can get it close to my coefficients. If I was smarter, I'd just memorize them and be like, oh, yeah, that's, no, I'm not. All right, mass 2 is 5.5. So we're going to have 5.5 times quantity g, which is 9.81 times sine of theta, which is 22 degrees, minus the acceleration, which is 0 0.4, 0 0.4. I'm going to write it as 0 0.399, though. And we get a tension of 18.02 newtons. And that is how we do this problem. So just to kind of get a recap real quick, you draw free body diagrams for each of your um, objects, the blocks and the pulleys. You then write out the equations, one on top of each other like this. That way, when you combine them all, instead of trying to do substitution, which is going to be a pain, don't do substitution. You just add, add them, line them up, add them together. The left side is added to the left, the right side is added to the right. The tensions cancel out, you solve for acceleration, you then take that acceleration, plug it into the appropriate formula to get the tension you are looking for. So hope that helped. I will see you next time.